The only newsworthy note of this weekend is the entry of the third MRD Motorsports car, the number 92, driven by international racing superstar Tom Delgado. He led 43 of the 80 laps in the qualifier and drove on to a dominating victory. The qualifier itself? It wasn't a crash fest, surprisingly. In fact, there wasn't even a single caution. In practice this week, all the cars were running in packs of up to 200 miles per hour entering turn one, and that's a potential danger here because the track is so narrow. Taking the pole for the second time this season is Samuel Brown driving the number 71 Best Buy Chevy for Johnson Racing, and he takes the green flag with Blake Hampausnaz outside, Andy Lambert right behind him, and that's going to make a Chevy top three. Best Buy is leaving this team at the end of the season, the 71 team, and they're going to sponsor Greg Woodard and his Terra International Motorsports group, the 111 team, driving the Lycoya Brute next season. International Racing Superstar Tom Delgado, he's running in about 25th position. He didn't have the best qualifying effort, but he's passed about five cars this first lap, so he should be fine for the rest of the race. He's looking really fast. Andy Lambert on lap two decides that Samuel Brown has hogged enough of the spotlight. He's got Barry Juveno and Louis Ballard pushing him to the lead, and he'll take the lead onto the backstretch entering turn three on lap two. Barry Juveno uh, gets hung out on the outside line, Louis Ballard and Preston Bell, and he gets turned onto the apron and onto the grass entering the trioval, and there's a wreck behind that. Caution one, lap four. Fozzie Dianenzo and Zach Kovach decide that running four wide with Cameron Taylor and John Jefferson is the best idea. Zach Kovach turns Fozzie Dianenzo. Tommy Urban gets a piece of this, and so does Craig Taylor in the 36 as he tries to avoid it. And he's going to pull up into Fozzie Dianenzo and get him on his side a bit. Problems for the leader, Andy Lambert, as he reports a tire going down under caution, and he pulls onto the apron to nurse that car to the pits. Lap 10, Barry Juveno leads on the restart with Samuel Brown right behind him and Preston Bell in third place. Preston Bell looks to the inside of Samuel Brown and he will complete the pass entering turn 2, making it a Stephens Racing 1-2 on lap 10. Four wide back in the pack, you've got Rene Ricarmier, Ryan Griffin, Nikos Kostopoulos, and Gaspar D'Souza battling for the position and they sort it out. Ryan Griffin's team, Great Lakes Motorsports, is expanding to a two-car operation next season with Casey Lester and Ike Durbin. Ike Durbin is going to make his debut at Decatur in the 0-2 for uh, the old-timers group. Preston Bell is in second place on lap 12. He looks to the inside of Barry Juveno, and he's going to challenge for the lead, entering turn one, and he will complete the pass. He's getting help from Steve Johnson in that 900 extends mobile, and Steve Johnson decides that that's not enough. He must have the lead, so he sweeps by Preston Bell, and he will lead lap 12. Look at Lewis Jones back there in third place, challenging Barry Juveno, and Lewis Jones is in the top five. He's stuck on the outside three wide. Are they going to make it four wide? No, they're not. Lewis Jones giving that 0-1 an excellent run. They missed Daytona. They're locked into the field still, though. Preston Bell and Steve Johnson have been battling like this side by side for the past few laps. Preston Bell takes the lead over Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson slots in right behind him. However, this battle's not over. Steve Johnson, the next lap, decides that he wants to lead back, so he makes sure it happens. Isaac Kowalczyk right behind this group, pushed by Samuel John Samuel Brown, excuse me. Uh, Sam Johnson's the team owner of that car. Tom Delgado is running in 32nd position. He pit under this last caution. However, he had made his way up to 23rd position before that yellow came out which is a promising sign. He's running behind his teammate, John Jefferson, who is doing a wonderful job. And we've got four wide in front of here. Uh, Andy Lambert, he's getting hooked by Greg Maddox. And how did he save that? We're going to get a replay of that right here. And that was an impressive move of driving. And they're still going crazy. Four wide here, Rene Ricarmier pushes up into Ryan Griffin. And Greg Maddox just hooks the 15 car. I'm amazed that he was able to save that. What a piece of driving from that 15 car. And he actually gains positions from that maneuver. Only a piece of expert driving by that 15 car. Sixth place, Nikos Kostopoulos is mixing up with Chris Benson and door checking into Louis Ballard in the 11. If you're not rubbing, you're not racing, I guess. But he's been all over the place the past few laps. He's not being retained by this team, which is a shame, because he's putting on a fine run right here. Lenny Jacobs has moved up into third place from 30th in 14 laps, by far the fastest car on the track. He pulls off a pass on second for Chris Benson before the line, so he'll be credited with second place that lap. But he, as you can see right here, he pulls away from Chris Benson. He puts a gap of about two-tenths of a second on him in one turn. 
Now, Lenny Jacobs, coming from 30th place. He challenges Steve Johnson for the lead. Does he have momentum? No, he does not. However, he will complete the pass the next lap, and Lenny Jacobs will become your leader. 30th to 17th in 17 laps. Claire Ossier, on the other hand, running in 35th place. She was running up near the front before the caution. However, her crew told her to come in. They're getting bought out by Manticore Engineering for next season, who claim they actually know what they're doing with the team, unlike Clockwork Team Lexus. We're back with international racing superstar Tom Delgado in about 19th place on lap 33. He's been working his way up through the field slowly but surely. Isaac Kowalczyk it gets a bit loose off of Chris Benson battling for a sixth position. This has been the most heated battle this entire race. The battle for sixth through about 15th place. These cars have been running two and three wide since, well, the restart. Chris Benson slaps the wall and Edward Carroll reacts by diving onto the grass. Seeing this, uh, it kind of unnerved him, I guess. So he pulls onto the apron and lets the uh, entire pack go by. He pulls back up on the track in about 20th place, and he's going to run here for the next few laps. Andrew Tamarzan reports a puncture on his car, and he pulls the car into the pits. He's going to fall a lap down in the process of getting that tire changed. Lenny Jacobs still leads. However, Greg Maddox passes Ryan Jeffries for third place, something I haven't said much this season because that 41 car is widely regarded as the fifth team in the Johnson Racing Stable. Greg Maddox is actually leaving that group at the end of the season to go drive for ROG Motorsports, the owner of the 34 and the 35. Lenny Jacobs puts Craig Taylor a lap down. Greg Maddox has moved up into second place and a great drive from that 41 car. He's been He's only been up to the front a couple times this season, and Tom Delgado has moved up into 15th position. He is now in the top 15, and he is putting on an awesome drive for his fans. Andy Lambert decides that Lenny Jacobs has had enough of the lead, and he decides to make a pass entering the backstretch. The 15 car goes to the front for the second time this race. Lap 49, the 31 of Christopher Loxenden blows up right in front of his teammate. Johnson Racing can get no luck, and I've sh I'm sure they've fired at least 10 engine builders this season, considering the amount of times they've blown up. Perhaps a bit urgently, because he just saw his teammate blow up. Uh, Blake Kamphausen sweeps by Andy Lambert on the inside to take the lead two laps later. John Jefferson is running in 28th place on lap 57. He's getting sacked by his team owner, Tom Delgado, at the end of the season for not winning him an owner's championship, which he reportedly spent the deep pockets of MRD Motorsports on to win. Blake Kamphausen is passing Steve Johnson for the lead, and he's about to put Fozzie D'Enenzo a lap down. And Enzo was involved, D'Enenzo, excuse me, was involved in the lap 4 caution, and he's well off the pace at this point. John Bracci begins green flag pits on lap 61, and lap 62, Andy Lambert follows him in. Lenny Jacobs re-inherits the lead on the next lap, and he is reportedly going to the third Paloma Autosport team for next season, as you see a couple more cars pit. And Tom Delgado has worked his way up to third place through pit strategy. Tom Delgado is running in the top five. A great run for the international racing superstar. Lenny Jacobs pits the next lap. Greg Maddox has now inherited the lead through green flag pits. And as I said before, he is headed to the ROG Motorsports car. He will take over the 34 car in place of Ian Elias, who is going to the Paloma Autosport team. Greg Max leads International Racing Superstar Tom Delgado and Joe Craig down pit road. Three of the last four cars not to pit. The last car not to pit, Zach Kovac here, makes an ultimately futile attempt to lead a lap, as you saw right there. He is very slow due to not pitting, but like a good backmarker, he moves out of the way. That 23 car will be returning in some capacity next season, the Zach Tech crew. Steve Johnson leads after green flag pit stops. John Bracci is battling with Stringfellow Vincent for 15th position here. And something goes wrong on that car. Yes, the team is reporting that a puncture has occurred on that 19 car. A very tough break for them. They're having an awesome run up there in the top 15. John Bracci will be returning to that car next season, however. Andy Lambert is battling with Steve Johnson for the lead, and he will take the position. Stringfellow Vincent is an interesting story this year. 
uh, the Retro 80 racing cars have, all three of them have managed to qualify for this race for the first time all season. Not sure if they'll be returning next season or not. Cameron Taylor is holding the 10th position strong over Lewis Jones. He will be receiving a new teammate next year in the form of Andy Lambert. Uh, Kyle Winsloff has shut down his 8 car in preparation for this. Sam Smith is running in the top 10 as well. He is looking for a potential team next year. He is getting sacked as he has been overshadowed by Andy Lambert all season. Blake Kampausen makes a pass on Steve Johnson as he comes to let Fozzie DiNenzo. Ryan Jeffries and Johnson get together and go into the wall and Caution 2 will fly on lap 86. Steve Johnson gets hooked by Ryan Jeffries. They take each other into the wall. There is your championship leader Barry Juveno involved. And Lewis Jones drives underneath the 91 of Ryan Jeffries, and it's a huge accident. More cars are piling in. Lenny Jacobs is involved. Greg Maddox. Claire Osir goes flying. And we're on board. Greg Maddox here as he sees Lenny Jacobs get hit by Steve Johnson, and he slams into the 91, his teammate. And there's Claire Osir going flying through the air. She slams into Greg Maddox. We're going to go on board Tom Delgado here, international racing superstar, and he's going to show us how to get through an accident of this magnitude. He pulls onto the high side, gets through without a problem. Props to him. Scariest incident of the race. Uh, Lewis Jones drives underneath the 91, and that destroys the roof on that car. However, he climbed out okay. He only scraped the roof, just the top of the roof. Claire Ossier goes airborne here after getting clobbered by Craig Taylor. She is the one who we are most concerned about at this point. Ossier was able to get out of the car with help from some officials. However, we're not sure of the full extent of her injuries. Blake Kamphausen is leading. He's trapped behind a lot of these cars because most of them didn't pit under caution and they were stuck a lap down, so they are on the tail end of the lead lap. Many cars are, many very slow cars are in front of the leaders. Cameron Taylor takes advantage of this, and he swings by on the outside. You can see t international racing superstar Tom Delgado there racing in third position. Cameron Taylor will take the lead and get credit for that lap. However, there was a debris caution on lap 93. After getting the lead in the pits under caution, Andy Lambert leads the field to the green flag with Blake Kamphausen right behind him. He gets a huge jump. Stringfellow Vincent is by far the slowest car on the track. He was involved in that last caution. He's running only about 160 miles per hour tops. He lets his teammate by while holding up Ian Elias, Joe Craig, and Nate Lorenz. Running in third place is Sam Smith, doing an awesome job. They go four wide with Zach Kovac, Andrew Tamarzan, and Matthew Bueller. And Bueller hooks Tamarzan into the inside wall, and that will draw caution number four on lap 99. Tamarzan gets hooked by Matthew Bueller into the inside wall. He's spinning back up onto the track, doing many 360s, and there's Gaspar D'Souza, who slams into the 53, does massive damage to his car. He collects John Bracci, Edward Carroll, and Rene Ricarmia, and Creeper Stevenson's involved as well. We're going to go on board Rene Ricarmia here, see what he saw. That car just shoots straight across the track, right in front of everybody, and Rene Ricarmia would soldier on. I think they'd have to remove the car hood on that car. Andy Lambert leads on the restart with Blake Kamphausen right behind him. Tom Delgado, international racing superstar, is running in 7th place. Zet Kovac gives Louis Ballard no room. They take each other into the wall, and that will draw caution number 5 on lap 105. Zet Kovac, lapped car, doesn't give Louis Ballard room, and they take each other into the wall, spin out. Ryan Griffin clips him. Ian Elias is involved, the 62 of Enenzo, the uh, 19 car, the 50, 29, among others. We're going to go on the helicopter view of the 11 car. He gets clobbered, and he is just a human pinball in this accident. He gets nailed by at least five or six cars. There's Stringfellow Vincent arriving late to the party. And we're going to go on board the, the five car of Sam Smith. He hits the 34 and gets pushed up onto his side by uh, Creeper Stevenson there. It really was just a huge incident overall. Only 16 cars were left running at the restart on lap 110. Andy Lambert leads over Cameron Taylor. Cameron managed to get by Blake Kamphausen on the most recent green flag run to take second spot from him, and he's giving that car a great run. So is David Krikorian, who has managed to sneak his way into a top five spot. He's currently doing battle with Nikos Kostopoulos for fourth place. Caution six on lap 118. John Jefferson pushes up the track into Matthew Bueller, comes down into Preston Bell, and then goes for a couple spins. Richard Dean MacGyver clips him. Richard Dean MacGyver will be the only car to drop out after this wreck.
The restart came on lap 123 with Andy Lambert leading and Blake Kamphausen in second after he managed to get by Cameron Taylor. Josh Marshall is having an awesome run right now. He's running in third place, and he's trying to redeem the other two Australian motorsports cars who both fell out after crash damage. He is He's put a massive gap on between him and Cameron Taylor, and he might challenge for second. Ryan Griffin is putzing around in the back in about 14th place. He didn't really work his way up this far, but he managed to survive the carnage, and so he's going to get a top 15 out of it. Josh Marshall is challenging for second place, and he'll take the position from Samuel Brown in the arguably much stronger car. However, Samuel Brown would challenge back, and he would take the position from him a few laps later. Tough break for Josh Marshall, but Andy Lambert's got to be loving this, seeing the two battle like that while he just drives away. Brendan Kelly has moved up into fourth place, another car who's having a really strong run. This car was bought out by Lucas Motorsports, the same people who own the 6 and the 36 after Darlington, and since then performance has taken kind of a nosedive. However, this run seems to be reversing that trend. Last lap, Andy Lambert's got a massive lead over Samuel Brown. No sign of Samuel Brown gaining. He pulls down the backstretch. Still good. Andy Lambert is looking on track to take his second win of the season as he comes out of turn 3 into turn 4 onto the front straightaway. And Andy Lambert will be your victor, your winner, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Samuel Brown finished second, with Blake Hampels and his teammate in third. Brendan Kelly, an awesome drive for him in fourth place. Isaac Kowalczyk moves up to fifth place. Josh Marshall fell down to sixth, but still an awesome run for him. Cameron Taylor finishes second. International racing superstar Tom Delgado brings it home with a top 10. Nikos Kostopoulos, despite being all over the place earlier in the race, finishes ninth. And David Krikorian in the ROG Motorsports number 35 rounds out the top 10.